If you're building a Slack app or integration, there are two main ways you can format your messages, BlockKit and Markdown. We've already covered how to use BlockKit in a previous video. So in this short tutorial, I'll walk you through Slack's Markdown syntax. We'll cover how to style text, display code samples and lists, format links and different types of alerts, and finally look at how Slack can help you render user-friendly dates and times. I'll also point out some of the places where Slack's Markdown differs from typical Markdown because it's not a one-to-one -one conversion. So let's get started. This video is a follow-up to a blog post that we published on the NOC blog. So if you're looking to copy and paste examples, you can get the link for that in the video description below. Okay, so for the duration of this video, we're going to be using the Slack Block Kit Builder interface to demonstrate some of the ways that we can use this Slack Markdown format. So Block Kit Builder, we did a video on this already, but it's basically a way that you can use JSON objects to construct a really complex interface. But for this video, each one of the things that we're gonna be dealing with is just gonna be a section type block. And inside of that, we're gonna be using this Markdown text. Now, as you can see, Slack's Markdown syntax is spelled differently than regular Markdown because it is a different language. There's some overlap, um, again, but it's not a one-to-one -one translation. So let's, for example, let's start here with some bolded text. And to make text bold, we're actually just going to use some asterisks. So this is going to be pretty similar to what you would get with typical Markdown. Similar to that, italicized text is going to be some underscores. And if we throw some underscores around this word, we can see that our block hit builder interface updates. Uh, and then the last thing, strike through, these are going to be tildes. Um, and so all of these are pretty similar to what you would get with regular markdown, but we'll see some differences here when we get to the next section. Okay, so now let's talk about how to format different types of code samples. There are two types of code samples that we can include in Slack messages inline code and multi-line code samples. So in this inline code sample, all we're going to do is throw one back tick around our code sample. And then Slack is gonna go ahead and format that for us this way. Now the multi-line code sample is a little bit different, although it's still very similar to how you would do it in Markdown. To create a multi-line code snippet in Markdown, you would use three back ticks at the beginning and then three back ticks at the end. But there's an important difference in how Slack treats these two things via the API. Um, if you were typing this message into Slack, you would also sort of trigger your multi-line code sample directly in Slack using those three back ticks. Um, but what Slack via the API doesn't do is automatically add new lines or sort of carriage returns for you. So what that means is that we'll need to do that using this uh, new line character. So finding forward slash um, N, and then we'll sort of need to reformat our message so that at every new line that we wanna represent in that, we need to add in that new line character explicitly for Slack to render it. So now let's talk about a couple of ways that we can make more complex text structures. So the first thing we'll look at is how to create an unordered list. There's really no syntax to do this through the API. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just pass a dash followed by the item, then followed by a new line character to create a new line, and that'll generate us a structure like this. It's very similar to an ordered list where we'll just add this series of numbers followed by these new line characters to generate this ordered list. And the last one is this block quote, which does have this special character. It's gonna be this right angle bracket. Um, and if we do that, you can see that Slack is gonna go ahead and format that a little bit differently for us. And it can span multiple lines. It's often used to highlight specific pieces of information. So now let's look at the different ways that we can include URLs in Slack messages. If we want to display just the bare URL, we can just include that in the text of the message. Slack's gonna go ahead and parse that and make that clickable for your users. Now, if you wanna customize the URL anchor text like we've done here, this is one of those places where it's very different than Markdown. 
We're gonna use these angle brackets to sort of create this link entity. And then the first part is actually going to be the URL. Then we're gonna have this pipe separator and then the text of the URL that you want displayed. And now the kind of neat thing is that we can combine this with other methods. So if we wanted to say, for example, make this text bold, we can just throw some asterisks around it and that's gonna go ahead and bold that link text. Um, we can also do uh, mail to links in the same way. We open up those angle brackets, pass in our mail to support at knock.app, and then we pass in the text that we want displayed right there, and then that will render you a mail to link. Now let's talk about a couple of the ways that you can mention or link to different places in Slack. So there are a few different special mentions in Slack, and they're called here, everyone, and channel. Um, obviously they alert different groups of people and there are really two ways that you can include those in your markdown text. Either you can include them basically the same way you would in a regular Slack message, or you can use this angle bracket syntax with the exclamation mark to indicate here everyone or everyone in a particular channel. Now user mentions are a little bit tricky and this is just an example of how you would do one. Um, so again, we're using this angle bracket syntax and we've got this at symbol at the beginning. And then this is going to be followed by that user's unique Slack ID. Um, and typically because these are API driven things, we would be able to get that via the API. There's not a real easy way for me to grab one um, from the user interface, but that's just an example of how you would format one. Um, it's also worth mentioning that you can do this something very similar with channel IDs. So if you have a particular channel ID and you don't know the name of it, you can use the channel ID. And when Slack renders this message, like it's not doing in this example, when it renders in Slack, it'll replace that user ID with the name of the user or the channel. Now, this last one is just a channel mention, right? So a link to the general channel. Um, and since I know the name of that, I can basically do what I would do in the regular Slack app, and that's gonna work fine. Um, but like I said, there's also a variation of that I could do up here with these angle brackets and pass in the channel ID. Okay, and the last thing we'll talk about is how to format dates using Markdown. And this is where Slack provides you a really helpful abstraction. So if we use these angle brackets and pass in this exclamation mark date, um, then there are a couple of fields that we're gonna pass in as well to help us format dates in really useful ways. So the first one is we're gonna pass in this caret and then we'll pass in a Unix timestamp of the date time you wanna represent. And so, you know, if you're a JavaScript developer, that means you kinda gotta divide the milliseconds you might get uh, with a JavaScript date time by a thousand to arrive at this value, but this is a Unix timestamp. And then we have another caret, and then we have these curly braces that specify our particular formatting that is applied to that. And so we can see here that date, you know, we just get March 11th, date num gives us this 240311, you know, spelled out that way. Date short produces this shortened version, just mar 11. Uh, date pretty will give us kind of like yesterday, tomorrow, you know, sorts of uh, relative times like that, um, which is really useful, right? If you want to say, hey, this happened, this is happening today, or this is happening tomorrow, and then maybe it defaults to, you know, the actual date once it's sort of past a particular time. And there are also different time formatting options that we can pass in as well. So if we just pass in time, it'll render the time of that date, date time. Um, so this is super helpful if you're building sort of work-based applications where you're dealing with dates a lot. Uh, the Markdown language provides you a bunch of these formatting options built in. Awesome, thanks for watching. In this video, we covered using Slack's Markdown syntax to style text, display code samples and lists, include links and alerts, and format dates. At NOC, our goal is to make it easier for developers to build their own Slack integrations. So check out some of the links below to read about our APIs and drop in React components that simplify the process of creating a Slack app for your product. Thanks again for watching and knock on.